Welcome to Introduction to Marketing Essentials. So, we will start with explaining the differences between product advertising and institutional advertising and the variations within each type. Then we will describe the steps used in developing and executing an advertising program and then explain the advantages and disadvantages of alternative advertising media. So, advertising is one of the five promotional mix elements in marketing communication program. These modules that is 33 and 34 describe three of the promotional mix elements that is advertising, sales promotion and public relations. Direct marketing was covered in the previous module and the personal selling will be covered in an upcoming module. Now, to, now let us look again look at what is this advertising. Advertising is any paid form of non-personal communication about an organization, a product, a service or an idea by an identified sponsor. As you look through any magazine, watch television, listen to the radio or browse the internet, the variety of advertisements you see or hear may give you the impression that they have few similarities. Advertisements are prepared for different purposes, but they basically consist of two types. First is product advertisement and the second is institutional advertisements. Now, let us look at what are these product advertisements. These are focused on selling a good or service. Product advertisements take three forms. First is pioneering that is or informational. Second is competitive or persuasive and the third is the reminder. Used in the introductory stage of the product life cycle, pioneering advertisement tell people what a product is, what it can do and where it can be found. The key objective of a pioneering advertisement is to inform the target market. Informational ads, particularly those with specific information, have been found to be interesting, convincing and effective. Advertisements that promote a specific brand features and benefit is competitive. The objective of these messages is to persuade the target market to select the firm's brand rather than that of the competitor's brand. An increasing common form of competitive advertising is comparative advertising which shows one brand's strengths relative to those of the competitors. Studies indicate that com competitive ads attract more attention and increase the perceived quality of the advertiser's brand, although their impact may vary by product type, message content and audience gender. Firms that use comparative advertising need market research to provide legal support for their claims. Next thing that a uh, product advertisement does is to, is to serve as a reminder. So, reminder advertising is used to reinforce previous knowledge of a product. The Red Bull ad shown here reminds consumer about a special event, in this case a Valentine's Day. Reminder advertisement is good for products that have achieved a well recognized position and are in the mature phase of their product life cycle. Another type of reminder ad that is reinforcement is used to assure current customers that may, they made the right choice. Now, let us look at what this institutional advertisement is about. The objective of institutional advertisement is to build goodwill or an image for an organization rather than promote a specific good or service. Institutional advertising has been used by companies such as Pfizer and IBM to build confidence in the company's name. Often this form of advertisement is used to support the public relations plan or counter adverse publicity. Now there are four alternative forms of institutional advertisements. The first of them is advocacy advertisements. The second is pioneering institutional advertisements. The third is competitive institutional advertisements and the fourth one is reminder institutional advertisements. Advocacy advertisement state the position of a company on an issue. Another form of advocacy advertisement is used when organizations make a request 
related to a particular action or behavior such as the request by the American Red Cross for blood donations. Pioneering institutional advertisement like the pioneering ads for products are used for announcements about what a company is, what it can do and where it is located. Bridgestone uses pioneering institutional ads in its one team, one planet campaign for to inform customers about its rubber tree farms, tire recycling and environmental friendly factories. The competitive institutional advertisements promote the advantages of one product class over another and are used in markets where different product classes compete for the same buyer. Reminder institutional advertisements like the product form simply bring the company's name to the attention of the target market again. Now how to go about developing the advertising program? The first stage is to identify the target audience. To develop an effective advertisement program, advertisers must identify the target audience. Then all aspects of an advertising program are likely to be influenced by the characteristics of the prospective consumers, that is the target segments. Understanding the lifestyles, attitudes and demographics of the target market is essential. Similarly, the placement of the advertisement depends on the audience. Even scheduling can depend on the audience. Nike schedules advertising, sponsorships, deals and endorsement to correspond with the Olympics to appeal to hardcore athletes. To eliminate possible biases that might result from subjective judgments about some population segments, it is suggested that advertising program decisions be based on market research about the target audience. Stage 2. In stage 2, it is about specifying advertising objectives. The guidelines for setting promotional objectives described in earlier module can apply to setting advertising objectives also. This step helps advertisers with other choices in the promotion decision process such as selecting media and evaluating a campaign. Advertising with an objective of creating awareness, for example, would be better matched with a magazine than a directory such as the yellow pages. The third stage of this process is about setting the advertising budget. How does a company know it is spending the right amount? Although it is treated as the current expense, but part of it is really an investment in building brand equity and customer loyalty. So, when a company spends rupees 15 million on capital equipment, it can call the equipment a five year depreciable asset and write off only one fifth of the cost in the first year. When it spends same amount on advertising to launch a new product, however, it must write off the entire cost in the first year, reducing its reported profit, even if the benefit will persist for many, many years to come. Now, what are the factors affecting budgeting decisions? The first is the stage in the product life cycle. New product typically merit large advertising budgets to build awareness and gain customer trials. Established brands usually are supported by lower advertising budgets measured as a ratio to sales. Another factor is market share and consumer base. High market share brands usually requires less advertising expenditure as a percentage of sale to maintain share. Building share by increasing marketing size requires larger expenditures. The third is competition and clutter. In a market with a large number of competitors and high advertising spending, a brand must advertise more heavily to be heard. Even advertisement not directly competitive to the brand creates clutter and a need for heavier advertising. The fourth is advertising frequency. The number of repetitions needed to put the brand's message across to consumers has an obvious impact on the advertising budget. The next is the product substitutability. Brand in less differentiated or commodity like product classes like soft drinks, banks and airlines requires heavy advertisement to establish a unique image. 
the fourth stage is designing the advertisement itself an advertising message usually focuses on the key benefits of the product that are important to the prospective buyers in making trial and adoption decisions the message depends on the general form or appeal used in the ad and the actual words included in the ad now let us look at the message content most advertising messages are made up of both informational and persuasional elements information and persuasive content can be combined in the form of an appeal to provide a basic reason for the consumers to act although the marketers can use many different types of appeals common advertising appeals include fear sex and humor then comes creating the actual message copywriters are responsible for creating the text portion of the message in advertisements translating the copywriter's idea into an actual advertisement is a complex process designing quality artwork layout and production for advertisement is costly and time consuming one reason for the high cost is that as companies have developed global campaigns the need to shoot commercial in several locations has increased audi recently filmed commercials in germany australia and morocco actors are also expensive then comes the fifth step that is selecting the right media every advertiser must decide where to place its advertisement the alternatives are the advertising media the means by which the message is communicated to the target audience newspapers magazines radio and television are examples of advertising media this decision on pub- on media selection is related to the target audience type of product nature of the message campaign objectives available budget and the cost of an alternative media in deciding where to place advertisement a company has several media to choose from and a number of alternatives or vehicles within each medium often advertisers use a mix of media forms and vehicles to maximize the exposure of the message to the target audience while at the same time minimizing cost these two conflicting objectives are of central importance to media planning because advertisers try to maximize the number of individuals in the target market exposed to the message they must be concerned with the reach of that media reach is the number of different people or households exposed to an advertisement the exact definition of reach sometimes varies among alternative media newspapers often use reach to describe their total circulation or the number of different households that buy that newspaper television and radio stations in contrast describes their reach using the term rating the percentage of households in a market share in a market that are tuned to a particular tv show or radio station in general advertisers try to maximize reach in their target market at the lowest cost although reach is important advertisers are also interested in exposing their target audience to the message more than once this is because consumers often do not pay close attention to advertising messages some of which contain large amounts of relatively complex information when advertisers want to reach the same audience more than once they are concerned with frequency that is the average number of times a person in the target audience is exposed to a message or advertisement like reach greater frequency is generally viewed as desirable studies indicate that with repeated exposure to advertisements consumers respond more favorably to brand extensions when reach expressed as a percentage of the total market is multiplied by frequency an advertiser will obtain a commonly used reference number called as gross rating points to obtain the appropriate number of grps to achieve an advertising com- campaign's objective the media planner must balance reach and frequency and the balance will also be influenced by the cost cost per thousand 
refers to the cost of reaching 1000 individuals or households with the advertising message in a given medium that is m in the no, uh, roman numeral for 1000 then there are different media alternatives so in figure 33.1 it summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of the major advertising media which are described in more detail in the upcoming slides now this is figure 33.1 and advertisers must consider the advantages and disadvantages of many media alternatives that are there now let us look at the various mediums so one is television research radio three is magazine four newspaper five yellow pages six seven eight now you keep in mind that all these alternative medium may not be available in one country while they may be of importance in other countries so now we will look at the various advantages and disadvantages of each of each of this medium let us start with television the advantage of this television is that it reaches extremely large audiences uses pictures print sound and motion for effect can target specific audiences while the disadvantage of this is the, is the high cost to prepare and run ads short exposure time and perishable messages difficulty to difficult to convey complex information then comes radio the advantage of radio is its low cost can target a specific loyal audience ads can be placed quickly can use sound humor and intimacy effectively but the disadvantage of radio is that there are no visual elements short exposure time and perishable messages difficult to convey complex information the third medium is magazines magazines can target specific audiences high quality color long life of ads ads can be clipped and saved and can convey complex information but long time is needed to place ads relatively high cost competes for attention with other magazine features the fourth medium is newspaper so newspaper provides excellent coverage of local markets ads can be placed and changed quickly ads can be saved quick consumer responses and they are low cost while the disadvantage of newspaper is that the ads compete for attention with other newspaper features short life span and poor color quality the fifth medium is yellow pages so this yellow pages provides excellent coverage of geographic segments long use periods available 24 hours and 365 days the disadvantage of yellow pages is proliferation of competitive directories in many markets and difficult to keep up to date the sixth medium is internet video and audio capabilities animation can capture attention ads can be interactive and linked to advertisers while the disadvantage is animation and interactivity requires large files and more time to load effectiveness is still uncertain the seventh medium is outdoor the advantage is low cost lower local market focus high visibility opportunity for repeat exposures but the disadvantage is that the message must be short and simple low selectivity of audience criticized as a traffic hazard then comes direct mails high selectivity of audience can contain complex information and personalized messages high quality graphics can be used while the problem is high cost per contact and poor image that is people th throw it into the junk mail next comes the sixth step is the scheduling the advertisement the advertising there is no correct schedule to advertise a product but three factors must be considered the first of those factor is the issue of buyer turnover which is how often new buyers enter the market to buy this product the higher the buyer turnover the greater the amount of advertising required the second issue is scheduling is the purchase frequency the more frequently the product is purchased 
the less repetition is required. Finally, companies must consider the forgetting rate, the speed at which buyers forget the brand if advertising is not seen. Setting schedules requires an understanding of how the market behaves. Most companies tend to follow one of the three basic approaches. First is continuous or steady schedule. When seasonal factors are unimportant, advertising is run at a continuous or steady schedule throughout the year. The second is flighting that is intermittent schedule. Periods of advertising are scheduled between periods of no advertising to reflect seasonal demand. The third is pulse or burst schedule. A flighting schedule is combined with a continuous schedule because of increase in demand, heavy periods of promotion or the introduction of a new product. For example, products such as breakfast cereals have a stable demand throughout the year and would typically use a continuous schedule of advertising. In contrast, products such as snow skis and suntan lotions have seasonal demands and receive flighting schedule advertising during the seasonal demand periods. Some products such as toys or automobiles require pulse schedule advertising to facilitate sales throughout the year and during special periods of increased demand such as holidays or a new car introduction. The next step here in this process is executing the advertising program. Executing the advertising program involves pre-testing the advertising copy and actually carrying out the advertising program. So first important thing here is the pre-testing of advertising copy. By evaluating advertising efforts, marketers can try to ensure that their advertising expenditures are not wasted. Evaluation is done usually at two separate times before and after the advertisements are run in the actual campaign. Several methods are used in the evaluation process at the stages of idea formulation and copy development are discussed in these upcoming slides. Then comes this pre-testing the advertisement to determine whether the advertisement communicates the intended message or to select among alternative versions of the advertisements, pre-tests are conducted before the advertisements are placed in any medium. First of that, pre-test is the portfolio test. They are used to test copy alternatives. The test ad is placed in a portfolio with several other ads and stories and consumers are asked to read through the portfolio. Afterwards, subjects are asked for their impressions of the ad on several alternative scales such as from very informative to not very informative. Then comes another test that is called as jury test. It involves showing the ad copy to a panel of consumers and having them rate how they liked it, how much it drew their attention and how attractive they thought it was. Now this approach is similar to portfolio test in that consumers reactions are obtained. However, unlike the portfolio test, a test advertisement is not hidden within other ads. So here the advantage is it is not hidden with other ads while in portfolio test the, the ad is hidden alongside with other ads. The third type of test is the theta test. The theta tests are most sophisticated form of pre-testing. Consumers are invited to view new television shows or movies in which test commercials are also shown. Viewers register their feeling about the advertisements either on handheld electronic recording devices used during the viewing or on questionnaire afterward. After this pre-testing, because this pre-testing stage, there are three types of tests because it is important that uh, before you ro roll out the ad on the television, it is properly uh, tested. The responsibility for actually carrying out the advertisement program can be handled by one of the three types of agencies. So there are various types of advertising agencies. The first type is the full service agency that provides the most complete range of services including the market research, media selection, copy development, artwork and production. 
then there are other types of advertising agencies which are called as limited service agencies they specialize in one aspect of the advertising process such as providing creative services to develop the advertisement copy buying previously unpurchased media that is media agencies or providing internet services that is internet agencies finally the third type of advertising agencies can be in house agencies they are made up of the company's own advertising staffs may provide full service or a limited range of services now in order to conclude this module in this module we have understood the difference between product advertising and institutional advertising and the variations within each type of advertising then we have also described the steps used to develop and execute an advertising program then the evaluation of an advertising program will be covered in the next module today we also explained the advantages and disadvantages of alternative media alternative advertising media the material for this module was taken from these three books thank you